Hey, I'm Donna Wilder. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central, where we celebrate quilting and everyday living. Today we're going to take a carriage ride to the American Quilter Society Quilt Show and Contest, where we'll preview some of the winning quilts. So stay with us. Funding for Quilt Central has been provided by the American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Bernina of America. Nothing sews like a Bernina. Nothing. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Free Spirit Fabrics, quilting fabrics with style. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. Patty's 1880s Settlement, where friends bring friends. Statler Stitcher, automators of long arms, just point, click, and quilt. Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. Paducah was founded in the late 1820s and they followed a European tradition of an open air, family's, uh, open air farmer's market. The town surrounds the farmer's market rather than the court, county courthouse. The county courthouse was actually at the edge of town. Paducah is a river town. Actually there's more tonnage of materials and boats and barges that come by this five mile stretch of Paducah than anywhere else in the world. And there's more inland navigable waterways here than anywhere else in the world. The City Hall of Paducah is really unusual because it was designed uh, in the same design as the United States Emb Embassy in New Delhi, India. And uh, you've seen the New Delhi, India Embassy and they have the fountains in front. I saw them a couple of times, but they seem to have added more. I think they're uh, still adding. Are they? They look absolutely exquisite. Who painted them, do you know? The murals were done by world-renowned muralist Robert Dafford of Lafayette, Louisiana. These would be great inspirations for quilts. Yes, they would. I think that's why they're so near the convention center. Right? <laughs> it's probably true. Yes. And I guess everything, they're all designed around the history of the town and the buildings. And This is an interesting mural here. It's uh, of the Civil War, the uh, Battle of Paducah. Interesting thing is that those ironclad boats, they were made in Cairo, Illinois, and one of them was sunk out here. Now, the, the, uh, uh, about where the convention center is, where the quilt show is, is where that fort was, and one of them was sunk out there. There's now an effort to find that boat raise it and bring it back to the port of Paducah and have it restored. So we're hoping, really hoping that that'll work out. It's amazing. Everybody takes advantage of quilt shows. Look at all those vendors along I there. I know. They have so many things to market. And usually they're quilt related, whether it's jewelry or blankets or clothing. You know, I even saw uh, the Boy Scouts or one of the organizations this time selling little kits with uh, pin cushions. And I think everybody tries everybody to get into the... Does action of the quilt show. You know, Paducah is really known for the quilt show as far as all around, all around the world. But there are activities that happen here uh, from the time the quilters come. Actually, that's the big kickoff whenever you guys come. And then we start with the after dinner where every Saturday night we close the streets down. We have antique cars up and down the streets, 15 musical groups, jazz, blues, country, gospel. Uh, it draws anywhere between five and 10,000 people every Saturday night. And then we have the barbecue festival and summer festival. And Paducah's really known for their West Kentucky barbecue. Oh, that barbecue down here yeah, is to die for. Yeah, I know. I allow myself two nights, two days actually, for lunch, where I go out and have that good barbecue. And it yeah, is delicious. It is the very best. You know, and, and the restaurants in town. And here's the museum. You know, I think it's probably one of the prettiest museums that showcases quilts. Mm -hmm. and what I like about it is I can go and they change the displays in there. 
Yes. So I can go often and see something new. The thing we like about quilters is you come here, you don't trash the town, and every car that leaves, leaves like this. <laughs> and now I know what it means. It means the back end's full of fabric. <laughs> That's great. Sometimes you wonder, Tom, you'd think they didn't have a quilt shop in their town. You know, isn't it amazing that they could find all this fabric? And yet, I'm sure that there are quilt shops right around the corner. Where they, but, but getting it here makes it far better, right? Something amazing. special about oh, that Oh, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Oh, you know, that's that's the one thing I enjoy about quilters. They never can have enough fabric. No. <laughs> no. And you know very well what that's like, right? I know. Let's take a look at some of the happenings during the show. First of all, there are quilts, quilts, and more quilts on display. More than 400 in all. Having a quilt hung at this show is considered to be an honor in itself. Mingled in amongst the quilts are vendor booths offering the latest and greatest in the world of quilting. One of the favorite attractions at any quilt show are the vendor's booths at the vendor's mall. And today we're going to be taking you into a very special booth. This happens to be the Free Spirit booth. And when I'm not on the television show, I am managing Free Spirit Fabrics. So let's take a look at the kind of things that you'd find in any vendor's booth. First of all, you're going to find some lovely quilts because that's what they are selling their fabrics for. One of the things that is very popular in the vendor's booth are what we call the fat quarters, where we've compiled lots of different fabrics together in groups and bundled them together to sell. Usually you can find some free patterns, and here are some that are being shown here so that you can make the quilts that are displayed in the various booths. From fabric to notions, there are so many exciting things that you can get in the vendor's mall. So let's continue with our look at the quilt show today. The contest part of the AQS showing contest has awarded more than a million dollars in prize money through the years. The award banquet is when the winners are revealed and everyone gets caught up in the excitement. The show and contest is also an opportunity to learn from the best. World-renowned quilting teachers offer workshops and classes that teach participants new skills and techniques. If you like to people watch, and don't we all, then this is the place to be. Many quilters proudly wear their quilted creations, especially at the AQS Fashion Show. From elegant to the cutting edge and everything in between, the fashion show is always one of the hottest tickets in town. If you're a bargain hunter who also loves to help a good cause, then the fundraising auction for the Quilt Museum is the place for you. The bidding is noisy, but always fun, and there's a wonderful assortment of donated items. coming to the AQS show and contest for years and it keeps getting bigger and better each time. Knowing that bigger and bigger crowds are attracted to the show, expansion of the convention center home to the show is in the works, promising more room for vendors and lovers of quilts. Quilt City USA, that's certainly an appropriate nickname for a town that rolls out the red carpet for the quilters. If you've been to an AQS show, then you know what I mean. And if you haven't, then make sure to attend next year's. We'll see you there. We've seen so many of the award-winning quilts. Now we have an opportunity to speak to one of the winners. Joining me today is Diane Godinsky, who is the four-time winner of the Bernina of America Machine Quilting Award at the AQS show. Welcome, Diane. Thank you, Don. It's nice to be here in this beautiful house. You know. 
Do they let you still enter the contest? I think they let me enter the contest. So, After, although I didn't enter it this year, I, I, but I plan on doing it again. After four times, you just must have this technique perfected. Well, I think that you can always learn and grow. So what I thought was perfected a year ago uh -huh. isn't perfected now. Uh -huh. I'm always adding something new or learning something new. How many years have you been machine quilting? I started about 12 years ago, but I didn't really do free motion quilting, which is all of my quilting now, until about six years ago. I have been one of your most ardent uh, uh, admirers for years because I can't believe when I first saw your quilt, I was sure it was hand quilted. That's what a lot of people say. In fact, they go right up to it. I've had arguments with people who say, I just videotaped your quilt. You mean it isn't hand quilted? Right, right. right. And I say, no, I, I actually made this quilt. I know it's machine quilted. Oh, let you know, I'm afraid I don't know where to put my hands because I don't <laughs> want to touch. This is the quilt that you won with last time, is it not? Right. This is the one that I had in, in the AQS show in the miniature uh, category for my first, probably my only time. Oh. I didn't. I, di I was working on other things, so I didn't get a chance to complete a large quilt in that year. Mm -hmm. So I gave myself a personal challenge to see if I could do a whole cloth quilt in miniature and get it done in time. And it was a little more difficult because you can look at the whole piece and see everything. And a miniature is to be an exact right. replica of a larger quilt. So right. It's yeah. not just a portion That's of right. of a big quilt with binding. It's it's a large quilt. Oh, right. It makes it so hard to do. And in machine quilting, we had to get the des you know the designs had to be small to be in proportion. So then the stitch length yes. had to be so consistent and so small and so even. And it it almost made me freeze. And I've been very relaxed as a quilter, but but working on a small scale format was was definitely. And finally, I just said, well, I'm doing it. I can do this. And then it just went beautifully. And it did go beautifully. It, now, it what stitch length did you use? Well, in this quilt, this is really a fine stitch length. I don't even know how many per inch you would you would judge this at, uh, but it's it's much smaller than I use on a large scale quilt because of the proportion. Mm -hmm. So it's pro oh, it might even be twenty to an inch. I don't know. Oh my it's gosh. really it's now, really fine. You told me earlier that this feather stitch mm -hmm, that goes mm -hmm. around there was done totally without any markings. Well, I do mark the center line, one okay. of them, and then I just echo it and stitch the second one right next to it. It's, it's easier than actually marking two when they're so small. And, and, and then I mark the outer boundaries okay. so that when I stitch the feathers up from the center out, I can get them about the same uh, distance out each one so the, the symmetry stays consistent. Now, I would end up starting here and coming up with not a complete one, more less than a full one. But I've stitched Donna. How many feathers have oh. I quilted in my lifetime? You know, well, it's, it's embedded in my brain so that I found that I was starting this quilt. I drew them on my master uh -huh. plan. And then when I got to the sewing machine, I said, I can't see the lines. I'm just going to do these without the lines. And, and they were better. Because it was free -form. And I could see exactly the spacing, whereas yeah. when I'm trying to see the line, it made it more confusing. Now, what is this, the next row that comes in here? This is a little spiral that is found in most cultures. Uh, the Japanese have it. Uh -huh. uh, it's throughout the world, and it's a symbol of eternity. This one uh -huh. is based on the Welsh designs, and you can go to Wales, and you can see the spiral embedded in the stone, the ancient stones yes, and everything. It's everywhere. Yes. So they used it in their quilts, and so I wanted to put it in mine. And it's it's done without marking, too. You just learn that little, it's like learning a dance step. Oh, and then back and, and forth, has, back and forth. It has that beautiful rhythm to right. it as it goes. It's a very nice counterpoint to the lines. This has to be the finest crosshatch quilting I have ever seen in my life. Well, there are, there are machine quilters now doing this quarter-inch oh. grid. And it's difficult because you see everything. You see, if one of those lines isn't straight, you see it. You know, one of the things that's unique, too, is when you look at the back, the back looks just as beautiful as the front of this. I always say you should be able to flip over a quilt and have it be the off-season quilt on the back. Oh. You know, the back should be a whole cloth quilt if the front is pieced. You should be able to have the back as the front and, and, and preserve the quilt a little bit that way. Well, thank you for sharing all of these wonderful ideas oh, with you're us. Welcome. You are indeed an award-winning quilter. Thank you, Donna. I'm excited to share with you a revolution in the quilting world, an automated system for a long arm machine. I have paused this for a second, but let me get it started for you again. You'll watch it finish this pattern. Paul Statler invented this for his wife, Mildred. 
She was a hand quilter and she wanted to do a little speedier work. It used to take her three months to do what this machine can do in just two hours. It's absolutely amazing. Paul invented this and it fits on a regular PC computer. It is also compatible with Windows and it's quite quilter or computer person friendly, I would say. Um, you can also put this on any long arm machine. Wasn't that easy? Now let's move it to the next position. It knows when you set the needle in the middle of the block where to position itself to start. It's already programmed into it. So all I have to do is put the needle to the center of the block, push the button, and it will move to the start position and tack its own thread and just go. These particular automated systems are used in a lot of different areas. Some girls that have a quilter already and their businesses are so good that they actually need to get another one will buy the automated system so that they can run two at a time. They say a girl can run four at a time before she's a little bit too busy. Also, I know a fella that's been quilting for years on the long arm and he had recent knee surgery and he couldn't stand for very long but he just loved to quilt. So he got himself one of these automated quilters and he sits in an easy chair and watches the ball game while his machine does the sewing for him. And he says he has it timed so well for it to complete a row of quilting that he can get up, go to the local coffee shop, get a fresh cup of coffee and get back in his easy chair before the machine completes the row. So just watch how fast and easy this machine can sew this design in. Wasn't that wonderful? I can't believe how much time that saves and how precise these patterns are run. Also, this machine can run pantograph, which is the long rolls or rows of stitching that go across the quilt and you repeat them as you move across the piece. And I'll show you how easy and simple this can be. You just open your file, select whatever pattern you want, click on OK. Then you can add in your dimensions, and we know this piece is 74 and a half inches across, so we've put that in. Click OK, and we're ready to roll. It's a very intelligent machine. It knows where home is, it knows where the edge is. So I can just push the button for it to go home, which will be at the beginning edge of the quilt. It will begin all by itself. And it will run the entire pattern across the quilt at whatever dimension I set it at. And we set this for a six inch pattern, but you can make it as wide or shrink it down as little as you want. It's very accurate, and when it gets to the edge, it even knows where the edge is. It also has a thread break detection, so if something on your machine rubbed the thread or something and it broke, it would stop. It would signal you in a way that you would know that you needed to re-thread. You probably can run a quilt in about two and a half hours, a queen size quilt on this, at normal speeds. And some girls turn their speeds way up, or in some quilters, they just run real slow so that they have time to do things in between. I start my machine and then I just do my everyday things, answer the phone, and 
Let that thing do all the work. amazing that it knows just where to stop. The technology of the system is just wonderful. It comes with about 450 patterns already in its memory. And then you can run it in a program called memory and you move the machine in the design that you want. It will memorize that and it'll play it back anytime, any size. It also has a draw program with it. You can draw and it will memorize that continuous line program and put it in its file and you can size it up or down any way you like and it will quilt that anytime you ask it to. It just has unlimited patterns and it's so simple. Just point, click, and quilt. I'm sure you've noticed the quilts in the different episodes of Quilt Central and I'd like to thank everyone who shared their time and their talents to make us a success. Now let me show you my special gallery of quilts. The Noah's Ark quilt was accomplished by Bobby Green, a Paducah, Kentucky quilter. It is hand applique and hand quilted. Look at the fine detail and incredible imagination put into this piece. Bobby said she did this as a block of the month. It took her 11 months and her comment was, it was a lot of fun. Look at this fantastic lighthouse quilt. Depicting many lighthouse styles, this quilt has details, details, details in miniature. Birds, rocky shores, and sailing ships will take your mind to the ever peaceful shores of the ocean. The next quilt you are looking at is a quilt made by Cindy Walter. She used a technique she developed called snippet art. It's like painting with fabric. Isn't it great how the free motion quilting flows and extends the whirling effect out to the borders? You can almost feel the movement of the dancer. This quilt has motion, color, and elegance. The Crazy Log was done by Geraldine Bolter. It's a signed piece and she always works with adjacent color effect. Notice how the star at the intersection spins and we get a kaleidoscopic view. Laura Lee Fritz is from California and she raises animals including horses and llamas. She does beautiful almost spiritual silhouettes of horses and mountains. Her work is a great example of the sunset colors and landscape she lives with every day. This quilt was made by Kathy Franks, a thread artist who loves to pour thread into her work. Notice she has three-dimensional texture and some of the most innovative long arm techniques in this wonderful work of art. In case you haven't guessed, the parrot quilt is also by Kathy Franks. Besides dyeing her own fabric, she uses a new technique with the long arm to do the embroidery look. She anchors the thread, stops the needle, stretches out the thread like a long satin stitch and then anchors the other end by stitching again. The long threads she secures back and forth until she covers the area and brings life, color, and dimension to the parrot. Quilting is both practical and expressive. Quilts have become a whole world of individual expression 
filling the heart with love and the home with warmth. We hope that you too will celebrate quilting in your everyday living. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. for Quilt Central has been provided by the American Quilter Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. Bernina of America, nothing sews like a Bernina, nothing. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau, Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Free Spirit Fabrics, quilting fabrics with style. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. Patty's 1880s Settlement, where friends bring friends. Statler Stitcher, automators of long arms, just point, click, and quilt.